and welcome to the last of my three-part series on writing systems. In the first one, I covered writing systems in general, and then in the second one, I covered what I consider one of the most beautiful, simple, elegantly designed writing systems in the world, Korean. Now let's look at what I consider to be the exact polar opposite of the Korean writing system, the Thai writing system. Admittedly, I have a little bit of a bias on this one. There's a decent number of writing systems I don't know anything about, and I happen to know a little bit more about Thai because I had a Thai friend once who taught me a little bit, but I've studied a little bit of a lot of different writing systems, and I think I can say with some confidence that if Thai isn't the most complicated writing system in the world, it's at least really high up there. Now, I'm not saying it's the hardest to learn, that award would probably go to Chinese or any other logography where you have to learn a different symbol for every single word, but the rules for how the Chinese writing system works are actually incredibly straightforward. One symbol per word, one word per symbol. That's it, and after that you can just start memorizing. But with Thai, there's all kinds of crazy rules you have to learn about the way all the different symbols interact with each other before you can even start memorizing anything. It's so crazy, in fact, that it wound up taking me a lot longer to do the research for this video than I thought it would, and that's why this video is so late. Sorry about that, by the way. Anyway, I have found four main reasons that the Thai writing system has wound up the way it is. Number one, Thai is an abagita. It looks a lot like an alphabet, there are symbols for consonants and symbols for vowels, and for the most part you just write them left to right. But Thai is actually an abagita, which you might remember is any writing system where you start by writing the symbols for the consonants, and then you modify the symbols for the consonants in some way that indicates the vowel that comes after it. In Thai, though, you don't modify the symbol exactly, you just add the symbol for the vowel, but depending on which vowel symbol it is, you might add the vowel in front of it, or behind it, or above it, or below it. So if you try to treat Thai like an alphabet, you'll wind up hopping all over the place. It's much easier to think of it as divided up into syllable blocks, with each syllable containing the initial consonant in the middle, and then the vowel symbol is somewhere around it. Number two, Thai is a tonal language, and unlike Chinese, which just kind of gave up on the idea of writing down tones, the Thai writing system tries to incorporate the tones into the writing. It actually does this in a relatively straightforward manner. It just has a symbol for each tone, and you write the tone by writing the tone symbol above the syllable that has that tone. Not that hard, but it does add another important layer of complexity that is going to come up again later. Number three, duplicate letters. For this part, you'll need to understand the historical situation that Thailand was in when the writing system was invented. Traditions states that the Thai alphabet was invented by King Fu Khun Ram Khan Jhead. Never mind, I have no idea how to pronounce this. It was invented by this guy, and besides creating the Thai alphabet, he is also credited with firmly establishing Theravada Buddhism as the dominant religion in Thailand. Now, Buddhism originally came from India, so most of the Thai words that describe things having to do with religion, or Buddhism at least, originally come from Sanskrit and Pali, two languages from India that a lot of Buddhist texts are written in. Thing is, Sanskrit and Pali both have a lot of sounds that don't exist in Thai, so there are a bunch of sounds that are pronounced differently in those languages that are pronounced the same in Thai. Despite Despite this, the king of Thailand, whose name I can't pronounce, wanted to preserve the original spelling of these words. For instance, Sanskrit and Pali both have two sets of alveolar consonants, consonants that are pronounced against the front of the mouth. Normal ones, like we do, as well as these weird ones called retroflex consonants. And I'm not gonna try to explain how these are pronounced differently, partially because I don't really understand it myself, but the point is, Thai didn't have these weird retroflex consonants, so when it took words from Sanskrit and Pali, it just pronounced them as normal alveolar consonants. But King What's His Name wanted to be able to look at a Thai word that came from these languages and tell how it would have been spelled and pronounced in the original Indian language. So he made up two sets of letters, one for each way of pronouncing it in the original Indian language, resulting in the Thai writing system actually having a bunch more symbols than it does sounds. This might seem pretty silly, but it actually happened a lot in history, where people wound up with more symbols than sounds so they could accurately transcribe things from other languages. The only reason we have the letter C and the letter K in English is because people in ancient Rome wanted to be able to accurately transcribe things from ancient Greek. And there are a couple diacritical marks that don't mean anything different in English, but we took in order to preserve the original spelling of the language we took it from. So as you can see, Thai started out pretty complicated when it was first invented. It was an abagita that looked like an alphabet, it had a bunch of tone markers, it had a bunch of duplicate letters for transcribing things from Indian languages, but that's nothing. That's not even the beginning of why Thai is so complicated today. Because by far the biggest reason Thai is so complicated is… Number four, Thai has changed a lot over the past 700 years. All languages change over time, but much of the time the way we write them down doesn't. Because of this, in general, the longer it's been since the last time a language had major spelling reforms, and the more the pronunciations changed since then, the harder it becomes to tell how something is pronounced based on how it's written, and vice versa. For the Thai language, the biggest thing that's happened is that a little while after the writing system was invented, it underwent a massive sound shift where a bunch of vocalized sounds, specifically the b, d, j, and g sounds, merged with their unvocalized equivalents, becoming pronounced the same as the sounds p, t, ch, and k. This would have made it impossible to tell a lot of words apart if it weren't for one thing. All three of the Thai language's tones split 
into two tones, depending on whether the consonant that came before it was originally vocalized or unvocalized. So now, a lot of tone symbols might be referring to two different tones, and we have even more duplicate consonant letters than we started out with. To figure out which tone a symbol represents, you need to know whether the consonant that came before it was originally vocalized or unvocalized, and decide based on that. My favorite example of this is the Thai aspirated unvocalized alveolar plosive, otherwise known as the T, T sound, which because of duplicate letters to transcribe Indian languages and subsequent sound merges, has six different symbols to represent it with. But it doesn't stop there. The tones have done even more moving around and shuffling since then, based on the consonant that comes before it and the vowel that the tone is on, so you pretty much just have to memorize this table of different kinds of consonants and vowels and tone symbols to figure out which tone to use. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Why would the Thai people go on using this writing system if it's so insane and complicated? Well, for one thing, there's just tradition. I mean, which is easier in the short run? Convincing everyone in the entire country to use a different writing system that you just made up, change all the road signs and replace all of the important records, or just continue continue teaching kids the same weird rules you had to learn growing up too. But for another thing, consider this. If you plopped a person from 15th century Thailand down in the middle of modern day Bangkok, they'd probably have no idea what anyone was saying. It'd be like us trying to read Shakespeare times a trillion. But at the same time, they'd be able to read all the road signs and communicate with people with writing just fine because the writing hasn't changed at all in the past 700 years. In the same way, people who live in Thailand today can go up to ancient temples and dig up centuries old documents and perfectly understand the words written by their ancestors dozens of generations ago. If they were to change their writing system, they would be cutting themselves off from all that heritage, all that culture. Besides, how cool is it that every time anyone in Thailand writes something, they're essentially retracing the steps their language has taken the past 700 years in order to figure out how it would have been written back then. And every time anyone reads anything in Thai, they're basically looking at a representation of how it was written centuries ago and figuring out how it should be pronounced today. If there's one thing to take away from studying the Thai writing system, it's that language isn't just beautiful for how perfect and simple it can be. It can also be beautiful for being complicated, for being arbitrary, and for being a living, modern-day remnant of our ancient past. It does kind of make me wonder, though, how do sound changes like these happen? I mean, if kids learn how to talk from their parents and they learned how from their parents, how do these sound changes start and how do they spread? Well, what if I told you that there is a sound shift going on in English right now? Come back next time when I talk about the Cot Cot merger. Anyway, see you then! Give me a smidge of confidence Give me a speck of something that makes sense Give me an idea of dependency Give me a dash of my own